Well, I think some of those forces have been at play for some time. And, you know, China uh, asserts uh, its sovereignty. Obviously, there's contested uh, claims in relation to the South China Sea. And Australia's tried to be consistent in a number of respects. Um, we've been consistent about the best approach being a multilateral approach. We've been consistent with respect to the South China Sea in terms of advocacy saying all the parties need to come together and work out a solution consistent with UNCLOS, with the you know, uh, Convention of the Law of the Sea. So um, Australia's an honest broker on this, consistent, and, uh, and we've always maintained that the best support on each of these issues, whether it's a trade tension or whether it's a defence tension or whatever it may be, comes back to a multilateral approach. And yet, I know Australia has been concerned about um, an encroachment into islands which are independent from China, independent from Australia, and actually build up of, of China assets in those areas as well. And of course, then we talk about the military build up in the South China Seas and, uh, and areas such as that as well. Is there an arms race going on? If so, uh, history tells us arms races don't end well. Uh, well, I certainly wouldn't describe it in that way. Is there an arms build-up um, going well, on? Well, I mean, what, what, what we're seeing globally is that there, as there has always been, continues to be an evolution of approach, defensive mechanisms. You know, I'm Defence Industry Minister. I'm always looking at the way in which Australia can ensure that our national posture is one that is strong. If we are strong, then we know, and, and importantly, a, a, you know, a very big pillar of that strength comes from having a, a domestic sovereignty, a domestic capability in relation to our defence forces. If we have that, then we know that that in turn produces a dividend, and that dividend is stability and peace. All of us are committed to that. Ultimately, the only way we maintain stability and peace in the region is, I believe, by driving prosperity. We secure prosperity through trade. Uh, and if we do that, then I fundamentally believe that we'll see a good resolution. Um, Australia has been a terrific partner to the United States for decades. Sure. But increasingly, the, the positions that Washington is taking seem somewhat at odds with the, the view out of Canberra. I, I just would be interested to get your perspective on this as we see this row rumble on between the United States and China. Yeah. Is Australia finding itself um, having to pick sides or perhaps having to just step away from the US perspective on this? You were a former trade minister. Sure. You know very well how the path that Obama laid out for trade deals faltered with the new administration. Um, is it time perhaps for Australia to cut loose a little bit from Washington? Uh, well, I mean, there's an assumption built into your question, which is that our ties with Washington are perhaps too strong, and, and I don't think that's the case. But look, what I would say in the same vein about multilateral approach, Australia's always had independent policy. We are going to pursue policy that's in Australia's best national interest. Um, with respect to trade, uh, we firmly believe in the benefits that flow from bilateral deals, from multilateral deals, from plurilateral deals. So we pursue all of those. That was part of the dance card that I had when I was Minister, and that's continuing on with the, with the Minister now. So, you know, we're striking up deals, we're looking to diversify. Australia's trade exposure, South America, uh, deals with uh, Indonesia, with Hong Kong, uh, with China, with the you European Union. European countries, perhaps? <laughs> with, the, with, the, with, the, with the UK <laughs> and, uh, and, of course, with the EU, where we've commenced negotiations on an FTA there as well. So, um, to get back to the core of your question, uh, we have always maintained a position that serves our national interest. Now, whether that sometimes sits in contrast to Washington or indeed to Beijing. Can we get a quick so let, let me, let me oh, just well. ask you one, one quick question. Do you believe Huawei is a threat to the West? Australia took a position uh, as a government that we would not allow Huawei to participate in the rollout of 5G in our country. Um, that speaks to what we believe are some of the inherent uh, weaknesses with respect to Huawei that uh, we were concerned about. If we didn't have uh, a reason for doing that, we wouldn't have taken that decision. Um, can I just grab a quick 20 seconds on Brexit for you? Sure. Uh, any, we've got Liam Fox coming on the show a little bit later on. Um, any hopes for anything quick with the British? Or do you just have to wait and see like the rest of us? Uh, in terms of Australia's bilateral deal with the yeah. Brits, do you mean? Or, well, well certainly, look, Liam Fox has done an outstanding job. I mean, I think he's, he's a very, very good trade minister for the UK. And uh, these are tough times. You know, clearly there's a lot of turbulence that's happening in the UK. Um, Australia will always be a good friend to the UK. We share so much. We have similar values. We've got terrific opportunities on the trade front. And, you know, I was pleased with Liam to be the very first country with whom we launched a bilateral agreement to, you know, commence fast-tracking an FTA. Great. So I think we can certainly do it. But, but, I mean, speaking frankly, the UK needs to sort out where it's ultimately going to go. Um, we're all watching with great interest and, you know, I think PMA and, and others in the UK system have got to work through what are incredibly complex factors. There's no simple solution here, that's clear. Um, but we'll always be a very good friend.